Hello everyone, today I'm going to run over a quick Unity tutorial as to how to get a dynamic combat system working. Now the advantages of this system is all we'd really be animating is a hand object which will be attached to our player and we'll only need separate animations for each weapon type. So if you have a bunch of swords and maces they can all share like a swinging animation and if you have a bunch of like lances and daggers they can all share a uh, stabbing animation. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to review, assuming that you've taken a look at my previous animator tutorial in Unity. If you haven't, there's a link to that in the description. So let's get started. Last time we set up player anim controller for our walking state, and we have a blend tree working right now between a whole bunch of different states. And since then, I've set up an idle blend tree too. So we have uh, facing for different directions. And to do this, I've added parameters to my animator. I've added last horizontal, last vertical. These are changed in uh, player walk behavior. And the way they're changed is pretty clever. These are changed in player walk behavior. And they're only changed while we're still moving. If we're not moving, we're not going to change last horizontal and last vertical. If you can get something like this working in Unity, where you have walking in all directions, and you have an idle, you're pretty much set to follow this tutorial. I'll also ask that you add uh, two more floats to your animator. I need you to add an attack multiplier and an attack float. Now, we'll look more into this later. Now, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is create ourselves some weapons. I've created these two for use later, just to speed things up but I'll run you through how we generally create them. Let's go into a sprites folder and you can find weapons online. I'm going to just pick, I think this uh, katana looks pretty cool. So we're going to add this to our all weapons. We're going to put this near the top and I'm going to tag it as weapon. You may need to add yourself a new tag and then come back here and make sure it's set. Um, I'm going to go to the scene and check if this katana is visible. It doesn't look like it is, so I'm going to sort this on a new layer, which should be above the layer where your character is. My character is on the gameplay sorting layer, so I add in an above and a below character sorting layer. Please add both an above and <laughs> below character sorting layer and lay it out like this. I'll get into why in a short moment. Now I'm going to move this here. And for my use, I think this is easier to set up if all of your weapons are facing the same way. I'm going to face mine to be up, like so. Okay, so now my katana is in position. I'm going to add Circle Collider 2D, and this will be a trigger, and it will actually get the collision to do damage later. We'll have a weapon script that will attach to this, and that will have a weapon script as well. And this script will use this collider we just made in order to deal damage. Now these fields represent the stats of the weapon. The speed is actually how fast the animation will play for an attack animation later. We'll look into that more soon. And the power is basically how much damage we're going to deal. And we'll see where that's used in a bit too. And we'll look at handle offset, attack animation of play, and projectile weapon in more detail later. For now, Let's just find comfort in the fact that we've set up a weapon and imported it into Unity. Right now, the player doesn't have any way to hold the weapon. I'll start by creating a cube. I'm going to make this cube about the size of however big I think my player's hand is. I'm going to move this just to approximately where I think the hand is and where it belongs. And that looks good enough for me. I'm going to rename this hand. And if we press play right now, we'll notice that the hand will always follow the player in that position. Now we have a player with a hand. I think this empty cube can be a little confusing, so I'm actually going to remove the mesh render and mesh filter, and I'm just going to add a sprite render. This will not show up in the final game, but we'll use it for an image for when we are debugging. We're going to make sure that this is drawn above the characters again. And now we can see 
For this sprite, you can just use any image. I like using a box with an arrow in it. I drew two here. It's not important. You can draw it however you'd like. You can even just use a, uh, the basic uh, box shape. We have our hands set up. Now, we need some way to map the weapon to the hand. I'm going to add a component called an inventory. The inventory is responsible for telling us what weapons we actually possess. So, it contains a list of game objects, which is the weapons we have access to, and I recommend setting this in the inspector for now. If you want to add a weapon somehow in the game, you'll have to call this from one of your other scripts or an event trigger. If there's enough demand, I'll add a tutorial for this another day. We also need some sort of way to have a weapon be equipped. This script, Equipped Weapon, will actually set the weapon to equip to the player and will bind it to the hand, and it will get the weapon from the inventory we have. Equipped Weapon is called on start, and Equipped Weapon will basically find the weapon of that index, so the first weapon we have, and we will set it to be the child of hand, and we'll make sure that the local position is zero, and we'll use an offset so that if the handle doesn't quite line up, we can just move it around, make sure it's active, and we have a way to uh, set up UI. Now, if you don't want to set up UI, you can just comment these out. I'm going to uh, create a new UI image in the canvas. Now, an image is basically a sprite that is rendered on the canvas. So, I'm going to move my image, I'm going to change this to stretch, and I'm going to move this image all the way up here. That looks about right for me. And as a default, I'm just going to set it to the katana. And I'm going to rename this Equipment UI. Now, if we go back to the player, we can go to our Equipment script, and we can set this to Equipment UI. You may be tempted to change what Equipped Weapon is right here. You don't actually have to, uh, and it won't really do anything. This is just a way for you to see when debugging what weapon is equipped. So feel free to leave this one empty. Okay, we've added the UI image. Now let's play the game. Let's see if this weapon actually maps to our hand. As you can notice, we got a crash right here. Unfortunately, right now Unity is looking for a weapon, and it can't find one because there's no weapons in our inventory. I'm going to say our weapons list is of size 1, and I'm going to add the katana we just made into it. Now, on start, we should have this katana equipped. As you can see, the weapon's equipped, and it's mapped to the hand. But you might notice it looks a little bit off. For the first part, let's focus on the fact that we are holding it by the blade instead of the handle. I'm going to play this in a minimized play. That way, I can change values in the inspector. So let's go to the hand. As we can see, our katana is parented to it, and it is a clone of the katana in all weapons. We also can disable this as well. And as we can see, this katana is a clone of the katana in all weapons. Now we can actually edit the offset here. I think it's a little low. Let's try moving it up to 4, too high, 2, too low, 2.5. 2.5 is still a little low for my liking. Let's try 3. 3 looks about right for me. You could also move the X around too, but personally, I think this looks okay. So I'm going to recall that this is 3 right now. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into the katana here. And the reason why we have to do this is because you can't save anything at runtime in Unity. We can also disable this so it's not in the scene while we equipped our weapon. But there's one other issue. We want the sword to stay in our hand when we move. So we're going to actually need to move this little hand sprite out to approximately where we think the hand is. That way the weapon will follow the player. So let's get started. Let's go into our idle animations to start. I'll start with idle left. Now, if we press play, We'll enter that animation. I quickly paused it. I'm going to press record. I'm going to select the hand object. I'm going to use the move tool to move it to where I think the hand should be. 
I actually think this is perfect for left. So in order to leave it the same without moving it, you can just barely change one of these values. So add a one here and backspace. Now we'll notice that hand position is something that is changing with our animator. Now let's go to idle right. All right, before we go into the walking and edit the hand there, let's check that our idols are correct. It's in our right hand, it's still in our right hand, in our right hand, and it's in our right hand. All right, now let's go set this up for our walk animations. I'd recommend for following this tutorial, only worry about the first frame for the walk animation. It will save you a lot of time. So I'm gonna play this animation. I'm going to move this one over here. Okay, and there's one more thing we want to do uh, for our movement to look clean, and that is we want to tag our hand as hand. This way, the weapon script can access it and we can change the sorting layer to below or above characters, uh, assuming they're right-handed. Whenever they're facing left or up, we can go below, and whenever they're facing any other direction, uh, the sprite renderer will sort above. All right, now let's press play, and there we go. We have a sort of pseudo 3D effect going on. Now this is time